Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. You know, I love me some go bags. I did this go bag a little while ago for the Vero VRN76. However, that radio is red and this go bag is orange, so I needed to change that. So what I did was I put my N76 in the red bag. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So what am I gonna do with this orange bag now that it's empty? I think, I think we should make it an FT5D go bag. What do you all think? Let's go over the workbench. I'll show you what kind of stuff I have accumulated over the years of having the FT5D and using the FT5D and some stuff that I like. We'll get it all organized, we'll put it in the bag, and this will be an emergency go bag for you FT5D people like me. Which radio do you think is better, the FT5D or the N76? Leave a comment down below, see what everybody else thinks too. Let's get over to the workbench and get to stuffing. Well, that's already stuffed, that was easy. Seriously though, let's get this thing open up. You guys might have noticed the patch that I put on here. This is the same patch that I have on my hat. It's also now the patch that I have on the red VR N76 bag. And they make a bunch of different patches that you can use. These are called morale patches. If you haven't heard of them before, I'm sure most of you have if you're watching this. So I'm your Huckleberry. It's also the patch that I have on my hat. So I got a couple extra ones of those while I ordered. And then they come with all kinds of fun sayings and then teasing out a future video that I might be doing, so stay tuned for that. But let's do this in the reverse order. This bag is already stuffed to the gills. It is, look at that, it's it's packed. We gotta see what's in here, I gotta share it with you, and give me some feedback, let me know what you all think. First off, these bags are really cool. These are what you call individual first aid kits, I-F-A-K. IFAC. You can get them stuffed with first aid gear or you can get them empty like this and then stuff them yourself with whatever gear you like. I like it because they have lots of pockets and straps and attachment points and so on and it's really cool. It's not waterproof, it's not weatherproof, it's not anything special like that. It's even got a little air hole in the bottom of it so that it moves around a little bit. It has this strap here on the front and this is actually a pretty neat little feature. This is designed to keep the whole bag, the big orange bag, attached to this panel on the back here that is removable. So I can attach this. It has molly straps on it. It has PALS webbing on it. So I can attach this to something that has PALS webbing or I can attach this to something that has molly straps. I can also attach it through some D-ring hooks over the top. And then because of this Velcro panel, when I put this bag on, it's got a little bit of retention on it so that the bag's not going anywhere. I'm not, I don't have to worry about Velcro giving out. That Velcro is pretty strong, as you heard. But there's your back panel that you can attach to another bag to make this a modular setup. Or you can attach more stuff to the front of this with this PALS webbing here to make a modular setup. So I might, in a future video, get another small bag that goes on the front here and put a battery in it or something along those lines. So stay tuned for that. That's probably gonna be how I'm gonna do the FT818 bag. So how do you get into this thing? There is a strap to help keep it closed. My friend Kate MRD saw this bag and the first thing he did was cut this off. And I think that's a good idea. I am not ready to shed a tear, cut this off and then pour one out. I, I'm still attached just like this is still attached. But let's get this thing opened up. One of the cool things I like about this bag is it opens all the way up to reveal all of its inner goodness. And there is a lot of inner goodness in here. First off, it has a little pouch here with some mesh so you can see what's inside of it and keep some, keep some smalls. Let's take a look at the smalls real quick. My smalls happen to be 50 feet of RG174 coax. Why do you need coax with an HT? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Sure it does. If I find myself a tree, this is actually a roll-up J-pole antenna for two meters. This is really slick. And you might be thinking to yourself as you saw me whip that thing out that it is a little bit longer and that's because of the velocity factor of the Faraday cloth that my buddy Ben used to create this thing. He's got it all sewed up to the right length and then there is an attachment point up here at the top that is 3D printed. It's like a little little buckle that you've seen on just about everything that has fabric straps. So you can kind of adjust the height of that if you wanted to tweak it a little bit. And then I put an S-beaner on top so I can hook it up to a tree or to another mast that I have or something along those lines. You can very easily just do it straight away right there with the hook that's on top. If you come down here to the bottom, this is why I needed that BNC cord. He's got a BNC attachment to it. And then another one of those straps down the bottom so you can keep it from flapping in the breeze by hooking it to the 
lower point on the mast or a lower point on some string. I happen to have a four door long bed pickup truck with lots of tools and stuff in it. So I have my cordage somewhere else, but I wanted to put this antenna in the bag. So there is the coax to go from the radio. It's BNC on both ends. That'll be important in a second. There is the roll up J pole antenna fits in the palm of your hand and then disappears. And then I have a couple of these guys here. This is the first one that I got. You tell me which one you think is better. This converts from 5525 over to 4017. Most of the stuff in our DC world that has one of these barrel jacks is 5525. You probably have a bunch of stuff and adapters already in your collection. I have an adapter that goes from 5525 over to power poles. So going from power poles to 5525 to 4017 was a natural no-brainer for me. And this got me the ability to charge and keep it powered up in the car for long trips. Even if the big three don't advance as fast as they should, we still find a way. This is is a 4017, four millimeters on the outside, 1.7 millimeters on the inside. And this was 5.5 millimeters on the outside, 2.5 millimeters on the inside. That's where that 4017, 5525, 5521 nomenclature comes from. There's a big word for you too. But on this end, it is USB-C. And USB-C has this thing, for those of you that are new to USB-C and all things power. USB-C puts out different voltages instead of just the five volts that USB-A puts out or USB-3, which puts out, I think, nine volts also. But this puts out five, nine, 12, 15, 20 volts, all at different amperages. And you need this trigger chip, and there's actually a microprocessor inside of this cable here. You need a trigger chip that will tell the power delivery source that it is perfectly okay to deliver 12 volts and it will send 12 volts out and then we will be able to power the radio with 12 volts. And this is a 12 volt HT when it comes to external DC power. When it comes to battery power, it's eight volts. And you might be thinking to yourself, why is this thing so thick? Did you notice that we very carefully segued into the next compartment in the bag? Why is this thing so thick? And this is because my buddy Kevin makes these batteries, W0AEZ. I did a review on this a while back. This has got a couple of, I think they're 18650s in here, but they're, they're standard cells. It's a 3D case. 3D printed case. He's got the pins here to go to the pogo pins on the back of the radio to make your electrical connection. It does support putting the factory original belt clip on it. It's got USB-C on the bottom. And one of the cool things about this is it also has a desktop charging cradle charging stand. And it just fits right in there like that. And then you plug this into any one of the thousands of USB a wall warts that you have been collecting over your entire life's history and that will charge this battery up and make it good to go and it will also keep this radio from losing its charge this is one of the problems that somehow yezu didn't think to overcome but it's got a soft power switch which is oh it's so pretty but it requires power to be kind of on standby waiting for you to press the button as opposed to something like a balafang where it click turns on click turns off and it's an official hard on hard off type scenario. I can't believe I just said that on a video. One of the things I needed to do to get the BNC working is I needed to put one of these SMA to BNC adapters on. So I've got one of these here and it has this nice little rubber O-ring on it, which keeps it from, well, first off, it looks pretty. It's a nice little trim ring, but it keeps it from coming disconnected. It provides just a little bit of tension on the connector up here. And there's another O-ring here. So just a little bit of traction keeps this thing from unscrewing while you're working it and gives it a little bit of resistance for when you put your BNC on and turn it. Speaking of BNC antennas, there are options. I'll give you a couple of different options galore in, in this setup. So I showed you the, the, the magically disappearing Faraday and I showed you the BNC cable that goes with it. However, I have this window mount and this your, your window in your car goes up here and this is designed to permanently you know, sit on your window and provide coax to the outside. This part here fits inside of the window channel at the top of the door frame and gives you a nice, mostly weatherproof seal. This sits on the outside of the car and gives you a vertical mounting point for a BNC antenna. And it is made by our friends over at MFJ. And it has a little bit of tension on it to keep it from moving around on the window when you open and close things. May they rest in peace. There is another version of this that is out there that I will include a link for in the description down below for you. And this does come with its own length of, this is Mini RG, I'll say Mini RG 58, but it might be Mini RG 8. It's not actually written on it, I don't think. High quality coaxial cable. Oh, it is. Oh, those little liars. RG 174. So this is also RG 174. 
I could have sworn in the product listing for this, it said it was RG Mini RG8, which maybe RG174 is Mini RG8. I don't know. What is this fancy cable here? This is actually pretty slick. Yezu has this camera mic where you can take some low res. I want to say they're like 200 by 200. I did a video on it. I'll leave a link in the corner for you. It's, it's fun to play with, but man, is the data transfer rate really slow on this. Outside of the, the camera, the low res pictures and the data transfer rate, it's a really good durable microphone. It feels good in the hand. It's got a speaker in it and the microphone hole is up here in the corner and it's relatively quiet. And this thing plugs in through some weird connector that's proprietary to Yezu. It looks a lot like an older USB. And one of these days I might find an old USB adapter to plug it in. But with this and with this and an external antenna, now this thing can sit in a cup holder on your dashboard when you're your center console, wherever your cup holders happen to be in your vehicle of choice. And you can kind of radio with the microphone without disturbing all of the other connections and throwing wires and poking yourself in the eye with the antennas. So that's another option for you is the Yezu speaker mic and it's a Yezu speaker camera mic. So behind this pouch over here, I have the original battery. You can kind of see that the two batteries, they're, they're vastly different. This battery is almost twice as thick as this battery. And like I said, that clip does also interface right there with that setup. Put this back on here. And then that's all I have set in there. I didn't have anything put inside of these elastic straps. Maybe you can think of something you might want to add to this kit and put it in there. But for the price of the kit, there isn't, you don't have, like, it's not a mission objective to fill every single strap up. It's just nice that they have them there. This is one of those super elastic signal stick antennas. You can tell that it's gotten quite a bit of use over the years and it plugs right into that BNC connector. And so I can take this out when I get to my destination. Now I've got a you know pocket or belt clip or handheld radio. And when I get back into the car, I can swap it over to the window mount. I don't need to carry two antennas with me or I can get a second one of these and just leave it permanently installed on the window mount and just put this back inside the bag when I'm done. And this is one of those super elastic signal sticks and you can do things like that and tuck it away neatly inside the bag and hold it in place with one of those elastic straps. And when you're done, it just comes straight back out and it doesn't really have any memory. They don't like cold, they get kind of droopy in the cold. But other than that, it's a fantastic antenna. Let's see, do I have anything in this pouch? There's another pouch there, but I do have something hidden back here. If you don't like that window clip, you can also get a mag mount antenna and my little rubber cover for the bottom came off. It's actually the first time this one's come off, but they're easy enough to put back on. He says while struggling to put it back on. There we go. This is actually RG58 coax. So there's a little bit less loss in this than there is in the 174, but still a good idea. And there you go. So you've got pouches galore, room back here, super deep with a little bit of retention, room up here, three little elastic straps over here, a pouch with some see-through mesh. So you can put some little bits and bobs in there and not, not lose track of them. Big pouch back here, elastic straps, elastic straps, and you saw all the gear that I was able to take out of this. Pretty nice little setup. On the back here, this Velcro will also allow you to attach it, in my case, to the underside of my truck seat. So when I put the seat up, it's right there. When I put the seat down, it stays there and doesn't go anywhere. And this case is always in the truck where I need it, when I need it. So I can say, go get me the big bright orange radio bag because I'm going to use ham radio to save somebody's life today. So dude, why do you make so many go bags? Why do you do this all the time? Are you kidding me? Did you see all the stuff that I carried in that bag that goes for this radio? All this stuff that I, I can't put anywhere else? Why would I have a little tiny box full of radio parts and then the radio somewhere else when I'm gonna have one bag that's still relatively tiny and has all of the radio parts in it and everything I need and also looks pretty cool. These bags come in a variety of colors. You saw the orange one, you saw the red one in the opening and they also come in you know desert camo patterns and black and gray and tan and olive drab and all that stuff. So I'm gonna have a couple of different ones for a couple of different radios. You'll see a couple more bag videos coming out. I'm gonna space them out so I don't bore you to tears and beat you to death with bag videos, unless that's your thing. And then tell me, I'll, I'll make more bag videos. We can just make this a whole ham radio bag channel because you know me and organization. As always, I try my best not to show you anything that I can't put into your hands. So there will be links in the description down below for all of the stuff that I have shown you here in case any of this stuff strikes your fancy and you gotta have it because I've got gear acquisition syndrome. I know you've got it too. When you are on your way down to the description to look for all of the links for all of these things that I showed you today. Also, 
don't skip past that subscribe button. I really need that help. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. You can keep the mission alive. You can make this thing happen for me. This would be fantastic. I would I would certainly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And yeah, you know, maybe hit the like button and there's a join button if that thing strikes your fancy. I would greatly appreciate it. If you want to see the go bag for the N76 that I did, I will leave that one linked right over here for you. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.